In this screencast, we're going to look at some features we are working on for the next version of Natifera. The two main things we're going to demonstrate are geographical visualization and the Natifera probe, which is a deployable software agent that makes it possible to run all Natifera platform tools remotely as easily as running them locally. We're going to install the probe on the real Natifera.com web server and we'll deploy it like shellcode by injecting it directly into memory over the network using an exploit. First, we add the Natifera web server to the empty space by entering the name in the input bar. The Natifera.com domain is added to the space, as well as both the IP version 4 and IP version 6 addresses of our web server. Multiple folders are automatically created, which organize the information in various ways. The target folder contains entities which have been added directly by the user by entering them into the input bar. If the repetition of information becomes annoying, we can filter some of it by selecting options from the space toolbar. Let's get rid of domains and the net block folders. If we hover the mouse pointer over the IP version 4 address of our web server, an action panel appears which displays some information about the address as well as providing a list of actions that are available to reform. We're going to use a Discover TCP services tool and we'll need to add port 1234 to the default list of ports to scan because we set up our vulnerable test service to listen on that port. Now we launch the discovery tool, which finishes very quickly, and if we open the tree, we find that two new services have been discovered. One of those is an Apache web server, which is not really surprising, and the other service is our target, the Natif for a test service. If we open the action panel for the test service, you can see that there is a single action available, which launches an exploit against the service. So let's run that one. The exploit finishes really quickly because we purposely made the test service pretty easy to exploit. The bootstrap shellcode executes, then it maps some memory and begins downloading the probe binary. The compressed probe is currently a bit larger than 4 megabytes, which I guess is pretty large by shellcode standards, but as we'll take a look at later, we've packed quite a lot of functionality into those 4 megs. It's going to take a couple of minutes to finish uploading the probe, so through the magic of digital editing, we'll just fast forward to the end. When the probe finishes uploading, it will begin booting directly out of memory. This takes a few seconds, and after the boot sequence completes, the probe will open a socket connection back to the Netifra UI. and the probe is installed. A new remote probe entity has been added to the space under the web server, and a new type of folder has appeared called controlled, which keeps track of hosts with installed probes. The probe entity has some actions for interacting with the host where it is installed. For example, we can open a process manager which displays information about processes running on that host. The processes marked with the shield icon here are root-owned processes. We also have a file browser for exploring the file system of the remote host. And what shell code would be complete without bin shell? which gives you full command line access to the host where the probe is installed. I'll create a new directory, and then we can verify that it really exists by browsing it in the file explorer. First we need to refresh, and sure enough, Natifera really was here. Each of these views are detachable and resizable, and by default we open a fully interactive pseudo terminal, meaning that you can run all of your favorite curses based applications. For example, we can run an IRC client and it works perfectly. Let's go to the Freenode IRC network where the Natifra IRC channel is hosted. Our channel is called Pound Natifra. Let's join and say hello. Okay, that, that's enough IRC for today, as we've still got plenty of work to do.
Now that we've seen the basic things you can do with a probe, let's move on to some more interesting stuff. One of the tasks you can do with Natifera is sniff packets, assemble them into traffic streams, and process all the information with various sniffing modules. To do this, you need to move from the tools perspective to the sniffing perspective. After switching perspectives, the input bar and task output view have disappeared, and buttons have appeared on the toolbar for configuring and controlling the Natifera sniffing service. The button with the wrench icon opens a configuration panel that lets you choose which interfaces you want to sniff on, as well as which sniffing modules to enable. The network interfaces on this list are the interfaces of my local machine, the machine that is running the Natifera UI. I'm pointing this out because we're not going to run the sniffer locally. We're going to launch it on the remotely installed probe. To do this, we need to open a new space for the probe, which is similar to opening a new tab in a web browser. Each space is permanently associated with one probe, and in this case what we want is to open a space for the remote probe. At any time we can know which probe a space is associated with by looking at the status bar. Now if we open the sniffing configuration, the interfaces have changed. Let's go back to the first space for a second and open a new shell. If we take a look at the interfaces from the shell, we can confirm that they are the same ones we see in the sniffing configuration. Let's unselect all the interfaces except for F0, and we'll also disable the ARP discovery module to avoid seeing traffic from our server neighbors. Now we can start running the sniffing service, and it will be launched on the probe as easily as you launch it locally. Another new feature we are working on are various data visualizations, one of which is an animated globe that displays a geographical location of network addresses. If we open that while we are sniffing, as traffic is captured, live updates will appear on the globe. We move the terminal to the bottom and use it to watch the output of our web logs. We can create some traffic ourselves for the sniffer to capture by opening a web browser and visiting the Detifera website. Now if we go back to Natifra, we see a new entry in the log for our request, and we see that the sniffer has detected our traffic. The globe automatically locates my IP address, and an arc has been drawn across the globe from my house in Buenos Aires, Argentina, to our web hosting site in Paris, France. If we open the tree, we can see that entities have been added for the Natifra web server, and also for my local address, and the Safari web browser has been added as a network client. You don't need to remain connected to the probe for the sniffing service to continue to capture and process traffic. I'm going to disconnect from the probe to demonstrate how this works. When the probe is disconnected, a warning appears on the toolbar indicating that no actions can be ran in this space since the associated probe is not connected, but all of the previously discovered information is still available for browsing. The probe icon on the status bar has also changed to show that the probe is not currently connected. We're going to go back to Safari and generate some new traffic for the sniffer. This time we're going to access a password protected directory we set up in advance. So I'll log in as admin, password secret, nope that's not correct, it was admin, password admin, and now I've logged into the secret page. Now I'll go back to Natifra, and of course no new information has appeared since we're no longer connected to the probe. So now I'll reconnect but first I should close this terminal instance since it's invalid. When I reconnect to the probe, the first thing that will happen is the probe will automatically transfer all new information that has been discovered since we last connected back to the UI. Notice that the sniffing service toolbar buttons have changed state showing that the sniffer is still running. The client requests we made while the probe was disconnected have appeared. And if we open the web server, we can see that it has captured our username and password for the secret page. We're now going to leave the sniffer running for a while to capture some real live traffic to our web server, editing out the long pauses between visits. The first hit we see is from Germany. And now we have a visitor from Turkey. Traffic once again from Germany.
and from Paris, France, which is local to where our web server is hosted. It might be more useful for us to group the discovered addresses by geography rather than networks. So let's choose to group hosts by city, and we can see that each address has now been placed into a folder according to city of origin. We have a new visitor from Bothell, Washington. By opening the individual entities created by the sniffer, we can view information about the hosts, operating systems, clients, and specific HTTP requests made to our web server. This Windows box in Germany did not make any web requests, so it might be a worm-infected machine scanning random addresses. Here we have somebody reading our blog from Internet Explorer 6 on Windows XP. And somebody else reading our blog with Firefox on Linux. And our visitor from the US is loading our home page with Internet Explorer 7 on Windows XP. All of this information was captured passively and remotely with an Antifera probe. I should emphasize that the probe is executing entirely in the memory space of the exploited process. It's a self-contained injectable virtual machine with no external dependencies, so it doesn't need to interact with the file system at all. The Natifra application you run on your desktop is written in the Java programming language, so the probe virtual machine is, of course, a Java virtual machine. The probe has the same architecture as the Natifra application, so to explain the probe, it's helpful to begin by looking at the different layers of software abstraction involved when you execute Natifra. At the bottom layer, we'll place the operating system, which currently can be either Linux or Mac OS X, as these are the two platforms for which we've released Natifra. Both operating systems provide a libc standard library, which is a uniform way of interacting with the OS. Next, we have the Sun Java virtual machine, which is native code written by Sun and C++. The Sun Java VM depends on libc and other native libraries for interacting with the operating system. For example, to create threads, open files, and display things on the screen. The Sun Java runtime environment includes its own standard API library, which is written in Java and is called the Java Class Library, or sometimes Class Path. The next layer is the Equinox OSGI framework. OSGI is a really interesting technology, but unfortunately I won't be able to explain it in any depth in this screencast. To describe it very briefly, it's a powerful component-oriented platform for building Java applications with a high degree of modularity. It allows you to specify the boundaries and interfaces between parts of your application in a well-defined and precise way, and provides a system to dynamically load and unload components while your application is running. Next we have the Natifra framework bundles. The word bundle here comes from OSGI, and a bundle is basically a component or a unit of modularity. The Natifra bundles in this diagram consist of the entire Natifra application minus the UI. Next we have the Natifra UI bundles as a separate layer. This distinction is important because the probe contains the Natifra framework bundles but not the user interface bundles. The Natifra framework code which runs on the probe is identical both in substance and composition to the code which runs when you start Natifra on your desktop. The probe is really somewhat of a headless version of the Natifra application. Or you can think of it the other way around, that the Natifra application is really a probe that has a graphical user interface bolted on. Now we'll look at the similar set of layers involved when you run the probe by injecting it into memory as we saw in the demo. First there's a layer called the Peludo Dynamic Linker which is about 60 kilobytes of the total size of the probe. This is composed of an object file format that we designed and a memory-based linking system, which can dynamically load and link native code and other resources sent over the network. The Peludo modules are built with a special tool chain so that they can be loaded by the Peludo dynamic linking runtime directly over the network without needing to write anything to disk. Next, we have a libc layer, which is also part of Peludo. It's a small libc we wrote that provides access to operating system services such as threads and system calls, and also contains many of the utility functions you'll find in any standard libc library. This layer is also about 60 kilobytes in size. The Java virtual machine which we use in the probe is a small portable open source VM called JamVM. 
We've compiled it with the Peludo toolchain so that it can be linked dynamically with our libc implementation after being received over the network. The virtual machine is only about 190 kilobytes of the total size of the probe. Along with the Java VM, we send a version of the Java standard library, which we've modified in order to reduce the size by removing things we don't need, such as support for multimedia and creating graphical user interfaces. There's some room to make this even smaller, but currently it occupies a little more than 2 megabytes, so almost half the size of the final probe. OSGI has multiple implementations, and here we've used a different version called Nopterfish, which is smaller and more suitable for the probe. Nopterfish is about 750 kilobytes in size. And on top of that, the Natifer framework bundles are installed. The total size of these bundles is currently about 1.5 megabytes, and about half of that size is used by db 4 which is the object database engine we use to store model information. Also for the demo, we are deploying the entire suite of Natifra tools and libraries, but later we will send only the minimal set of bundles necessary to bootstrap the probe, and then later send other components on demand as needed. So as I mentioned before, 4.5 megabytes might seem rather large as shellcode compared to other strategies, or even compared to other post-exploitation software agents, but the Natifra probe is the first shellcode which includes a complete Java runtime, an entire network security tool framework, and even a high-performance transactional database engine. Now, as you can probably guess, it's not necessary to inject the probe into memory in order to use it. The probe can also be installed by uploading and running a single executable. Since the probe is entirely self-contained, this is a lot more convenient than what would normally be necessary to install a Java-based tool. There is no need to install a Java runtime on the remote host. You only need to upload a single binary, execute it, and then remove it when you're finished using the probe. Well, that concludes our presentation. Thank you for watching it, and we hope you found it interesting. To contact us with questions or comments, you can reach us through email at info at or by joining our IRC channel on the Freenode IRC network.